Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to HR Katha Presence Happiness at Work, powered by happiness.me. I'm happy to meet you all again in the new year. We had taken a break in December 2021, and now we are back with our journey to find the pearls of happiness in the life of a professional and at the workplace. In our first episode of 2022, we have Rajiv Singh as our guest. Rajiv comes with a bag full of experiences. He started his career with the PSU, Bharat Petroleum, and later moved to the corporate side. He has worked with Price Waterhouse and Coopers, Gujarat Gas, owned by London-based British oil and gas company BG Group, where he spent a large part of his career. He has also worked with Wellspun, Yokohama Tires, and now Solara Active Pharma Science. Rajiv has a rich experience in IR and has largely worked in the manufacturing sector. I'm sure you will bring in a new perspective to this discussion on happiness, especially from the world of manufacturing. Welcome to the show, Rajiv. Thanks. Thanks, Rajal. Always happy to be here and uh, great to have interaction with you. And this is a hot topic of happiness being talked about. My, my, my pleasure. My pleasure. So what does happiness mean to you at the workplace? I mean, uh, how do you define happiness at work? Right. So if I look at what the literature and what other people seems to be the guru and uh, Osho once said that happiness just happens. So you don't have to create something to be happy. It just happens. But uh, so that is on the other side. But happiness is basically you experience happiness in two forms, either by doing something which makes you feel good or by feeling something which is getting you feel of happiness, you know. So sometimes I see others doing great, so I feel happy. Sometimes I do it myself, so I feel excited and very happy about it. And about people, I mean, today we are talking about, uh, today on 25th, tomorrow is Republic Day, the Constitution yeah. of India. So people's side is always like for the people, of the people, by the people, right? So whatever you need to do in the organization, need to give some experience that will make them happy. At the same time, it's very difficult to make everybody happy. That's also a very practical way of it. Yeah. And simple question is that whether everybody is happy with the salary increment they get every year? Answer is no. Is everybody, are there people happy with their performance rating? Because these are the touch points that people in management or corporate sector do. Whereas if you look at, uh, workforce which is on the ground in the shop floor in manufacturing whether it's contract labor or whether it's a unionized workman or blue collar so to say happiness has a different manifestation right from the workman to the chairman as a hierarchy so yes. what makes the workman happy obviously is much different from what the chairman is looking like looking for in terms of happiness yeah uh, so we'll certainly touch upon the chairman's what they want or how what makes them happy but let's start with the bottom rung which is a workman so getting a festival gift makes them happy happy uh, taking care of their family members in case of emergency or in case of urgency the welfare oriented schemes etc so if you look at i guess if you superimpose the happiness pyramid on something called maslow need hierarchy yeah. How is your need met? I think that defines the happiness. So if I am, and that depends which part of the society you are in, which uh, strata you belong to. So having the shelter, having the financial safety, or having the social network, or having the self-actualization, which is like a top. So it depends which one you are chasing. So the happiness means that it should either what you receive makes you feel happy or what you do makes you feel happy and these days uh, even the world is carving a new definition for happiness now that we are in covid situations or we are in yes. place where like everything is talking about you know having uh, work from home makes me feel happy going to office makes me feel sad because again it's a long distance or etc etc so Definitions are changing, reference point is changing as we are evolving as a society, as we are evolving as a new age of uh, workers. So 
even world is talking about world happiness report which is talking about the, how i see my life in the country right? if you see all the publication sustainability of trust sustainability of belongingness to the society etc so those are the parameters which kind of getting evolved so coming to the workplace i think the happiness is again either what you're chasing and whether you're getting it or not what you're doing whether it is making you feel good and the third part is that what company is doing to make you feel safe and sound whatever you do so it's very difficult to put one definition which can make everybody happy but end of the day i must say that it is about the experience one gets and for that matter as hr leader or as hr professional or hr function everywhere one is trying to create the workplace which gives people an experience which will make them happy feel good about it they they feel excited about coming to bed i mean going to the bed at the same time coming out of the bed to the workplace or to the work so i think that's the uh, as an individual you have got your personal side you know and then you have got your professional side so uh, you know and and, and in, in your professional side your job is to you know take care of people and see that you know people in your organization are happy so how do you differentiate you know are the quotient of happiness in your personal and professional life any different you know i'm i'm, I'm sure it would be different you know your personal goals your personal achievements personal quotients of happiness would be very different from what your uh, you know professional life would demand for right so that's a uh, that's something like one can talk about that i feel happy when i do my routine work you know routine work means if i invest my time in doing some exercise early in the morning or even having a cup of tea with uh, my family members or having a breakfast together that makes you feel i mean good about it and when you miss it you feel work life balance is little question yeah uh, so that's personally that's right? that's having all things that what do you mean yeah yeah and at workplace if i am able to shape somebody's career if i am giving able to uh, resolve some issues which people have been grappling with whether it's a personal issues or professional issue or coaching some of the manager experienced people to manage their team better or help them perform better in what they are doing or even change their management style or look at reflection so it's like coach some of those coaching conversation <clears throat> or transforming the organization to uh, make it more fit for purpose or fit for future kind of organization uh, development that kind of gives you different uh, quotient i mean different happiness that one can look at so end of the day is helping people or getting uh, like i said it is about what you are feeling uh, whether what you do at workplace is giving you you know being hedonic right which means that i am enjoying i am doing the things which makes me feel happy or i am doing meaningful thing in life that makes me feel happy so everybody chooses different uh, different approach to be happy it depends which side of the coin you are in coin yeah yeah you know in in fact uh, you know in in manufacturing the sector you know you have been working for you know for many years now there are you know it has got two very wide spectrum of uh, people working you as you said you know from workman to the chairman you know there there is there is a huge gap and a huge difference uh, yeah. in terms of people you know in terms of you know the society that they belong to Uh, it's it's actually two opposite spectrums of the society you know how how is the perception of happiness different between the two groups yeah you know can there be oneness in this generally you know many of the organizations they talk about that you know there has to be a oneness in terms of happiness or oneness in terms of what we provide our employees yeah but but these so, are two uh, very two very you know broad spectrums of the society where the needs and requirements are very 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 different you know i i mm. personally think that there there can't be any oneness so how do you 
maintain uh, you know that you know you you are fair to everyone you cater to everyone's need and you keep everyone happy you know i'm i'm sure you know you you were talking about that uh, it is not possible to keep everyone happy but you know as a professional or as an hr professional you try you make efforts to keep you know maximum people happy that's what you know we can all think of uh certainly so uh, give let me share with you some uh, real life example okay yeah so uh one of the chairman when i was meeting him yeah he maintains that people that i have hired so far they have never left my company and that gives makes me feel happy about what the company is and what i am doing so while we categorize them as workmen or chairman but end of the day we are all human being yeah right so so behind that statement what you see is that sense of belonging is the same sense of making other feel good at work or feel connected or included in the organization that's why people are not leaving me so whoever i have hired they have remained there so that's one way to look at it other way to look at is also that the what will make me happy is a different parameter for different people right and yes. when you say that uh, to be fair now the fairness is also a relative term what is fair to me may not be fair to you right? so and and in fact i remember one of uh, i remember from my previous uh, interaction with some of my uh, ceos and uh, board directors so i came to conclusion that there are two types of happiness in life one is absolute happiness okay. and the other one is relative relative happiness okay now these two happiness defines to what extent i can be happy in life now what is absolute happiness that is centered around me that whether i am happy with what i have whether i am happy with what i am doing whether i am happy with whatever progress personal professional all that is around me that's totally absolute there is no reference to it but what makes you feel happy or unhappy when it comes to relative happiness yes or that guy is getting paid more than me or that guy is at such a level where i am still struggling to get there so once you start comparing yourself with others whether it's a peer group or whether it's social or whether it's family does it matter where but there is a relativity and that kind of makes you that could be relative happiness can also be a good driver motivation for somebody to keep excelling and to be honest i myself personally i think i have been working more on relative happiness in life from where i started my career where i started my life to where i am today so sometimes this relative happiness does give you drive you know uh, whereas absolute happiness is almost like getting into the top of the mass hole need hierarchy that you are you know so at workplace also you will have people of both sides who derive happiness from what they are doing themselves and what others are doing that makes them feel happy or unhappy so summing it up is like which one share is more do you think people you know with relative happiness you know who value relative happiness more or you know cringe for uh, you know relative happiness are more in numbers than people who follow absolute happiness <laughs> that's a tricky one but yeah i mean like i said relative happiness or i would say opposite relative sadness is more in number and more in number. relative happiness is less in number you know and it requires and to be honest managing the relative happiness quotient yeah. requires a different level of maturity it requires you be resilient because the context again happiness is in a context what i am trying to do in my life what i am expecting from the company what company can provide me so for example i keep hearing from some of the employees that my uh, you know my batchmate is earning double of me in that company or yeah, they are getting this facility whereas you are uh, we are not getting this etc now what is that i call that that means you are following your 
external local control to influence your decision or influence your happiness and that's what relative happiness is all about so you're comparing all the time comparing 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 but have you realized what can make you more happy or happier in the place that you are in have you leveraged everything to get the happiness that you want are you making enough noise to get that get your uh, gaps addressed so some of those corrective measures or uh, grounding or calibration is also important to create that happiness mood uh, we keep having this great place to work or uh, best employer survey etc uh, i'm not sure whether happiness is one uh, parameter in that but generally if you are score such a uh, some particular number of points that yeah yeah you seem to be in a good category of uh, being a good workplace etc etc but does that mean that 100% of people are happy in that no right it could be 80 20 principle 20% uh, happy and 80% unhappy or that uh, bell curve if you define the happiness on that bell curve again it depends which side of the bell curve you are in are you in the top 20 or are you in the bottom 20 and mid level is uh, fine so it is i mean happiness is very very individual and personal at the same time attempt is always there that how do i keep my workforce engaged right and i remember i forgetting the name of the person who might have put this theory together but yeah. i had one professor in organizational psychology okay and he used to say that when baby cries first mother thinks that the baby needs some milk maybe hungry yeah. feed her him or her milk if the baby cries more maybe mother feels that okay there must be some pain or some uh, problem yes. so try to find it out but if the baby keeps crying then mother is confused that what or parents are confused what to do yeah. <laughs> then you consult a doctor or you consult somebody so is it a uh, similar situation are there that even at workplace you do try to make people happy realize that this is what it is and be happy about it but if still people are always into the relative happiness mode is very difficult to address those right at the same time the point especially for the manufacturing sector yeah if you see the history the way workforce has evolved the way blue collar has evolved over a period of time right from karl marx days where time motion is study to dig to be more productive if you produce more i pay you more you know uh, every piece has a value even in china or any any manufacturing sector so the incentive makes you feel happy but whether the same productivity level is to be maintained all the time because people do age we all have our own limitations as we grow older and older yeah a uh, machine also is right so man machine and land land appreciates i guess but man man and machine both and age, machine, there, there, there is a depreciation in terms of productivity both in man and machine yeah right so so that is where so workforce shop floor workforce motivation or happiness comes with if i am earning overtime for example if i am having leave in cashment for example recently as part of some uh, measures and make it more happy at workplace uh, in couple of companies that try to do away with the leave in cashment straight reaction that oh that is a, because if people have been used to earning annually this much yeah. of my days are getting in cash which is a earning potential right? yeah. once you stop they don't value the they were not having this thinking that i need to take leave and take a time off right but for them getting this in cash is more valuable more more looking at the tangible benefits rather than intangible ones yeah, yeah. so and by the way leave in cash me stopping is a good value for the chairman because that is going to reduce the the cost of the balance sheet <laughs> yeah. but i'm not saying that could be a good uh, happiness for him but i'm just saying that how the same thing gets perceived from two angles right so so uh, i think what is also important to be happy whether it's a work for workmen or uh, middle management or senior management is a mindset to create some of those parameters which can help you be happy so whether it's work life balance whether it is uh, taking time off whether you having a good social network at workplace 
end of the day, I mean, you must have heard about it. That are you excited about coming to work every day? Yeah. So that excitement itself is a manifestation of you being happy in life. That's why you're excited about doing something. Excited about coming to office, yeah. And likewise, I always, uh, I always remember some of the personal story I'm about sharing with you. I've been learning. So once my manager, when I was in UK, he gave me a totally different picture of the way we talk about frustration in life. Typically, frustration is a negative word, right? That you yeah. are frustrated means you don't, you are not happy, you are sad. You are not happy with the situation. You want to get over that situation, you know. Yeah. So that's why you are frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. But. I got a different twist of the entire thing. He said the frustration, being frustrated is very good because you want to do more. So the energy is inside you to do more. It's just a matter of channelizing that energy in something that will make you happy and come out of the frustration. So that tipping point of being not happy or being happy is just a matter of time or just a matter of thinking. You, know, that you get it here and turn it on. So lots of things, I mean, we are kind of touching upon various aspects of happiness, but, and we all know that as human being, we are, I think naturally we have instinct of being unhappy or being critical. And that's yes. why this also work, this also workplace story everywhere that. Uh, and I think that you know, thing is growing by the day, you know, earlier, I would say that, you know, people, you know, if, if, if my workplace is peaceful, you know, where I'm not being troubled or, you know, I'm not under too much of pressure. I would say that, you know, my work, I've got a very happy workplace. Earlier, yeah. I'm, I'm saying, you know, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years back, people had this mindset that, you know, if, if, if I'm able to go to office and work peacefully, come back home peacefully, I've got a very happy workplace. Rest, other things can fall in place. But now it has, uh, you know, it has changed to probably happiness is now uh, related to achievement, growth, you know, purpose, a lot of, lot of things, you know. Probably, you know, these, these things are making us more unhappier than happier. Earlier, the demand was, uh, you know, much lesser than what we have today. And now we want more. Probably that's why we are more unhappy. How, have you seen that change happening? Yeah. You know, you are indeed. So uh, again, a little bit of uh, play around with this term happiness. Of sometimes you derive the best happiness when you see a child, a kid, whether he is small or grown up, till the age of twelve, I think. Beyond that, you do <laughs> they, <give, laughs> they give you tough time. But at least when they are growing <laughs> yeah. to stand on their feet, imagine the kind of happiness they derive from a small, a small thing that happens to them or the curiosity that bring in to explore things. And we as parent or we as a so-called well-wisher always say, don't do it, don't do it. But when you, when they experiment it, even if they break something, the first thing that comes, ha 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 ha, so it's like, I, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, and that's why even the grown-ups, is it still a valid saying, right? Child is the father of man. So yeah. sometimes a small thing makes us feel very good and happy in life compared to any lasting. And even at workplace, many times people say that you don't you don't uh, celebrate success, but there is lots of things which happens on the failures, correct? And yeah. unfortunately, yeah. if you look at, I'm digressing a bit, but that's also a fact in life that the quality is measured by the rejection rate rather than passing rate, correct? Yeah. Maybe because the volume of rejection should be as low as possible, so it's easy to measure. But look at the terminology that how it is getting measured. Uh, even a student or a university grad, they get measured by individual grade. But when they are in a workplace, they get measured against the peer group or against the work, right? That's how the bell curve starts fitting in. Yeah. So, so it's a little bit of dichotomy, the way we get, I mean, how our growth, growth happens or how we grow up in the society. 
and when we land up in a structured world like organization or the corporate world and that's why the campus to corporate has become a big uh, training these days right so yeah so we are taught we are grow we are, we have all probably you know made to grow up in a certain way you know the questions of happiness uh, is very different when we are growing the same question changes when we are, when we are at the workplace yeah that's true and that is what i think that keeps you moving in life that's also good it's not yeah so like i said a relative happiness is always good when it is taken a positive way but if it makes you sad or thinking of suicide and all that's a different thing you know i was looking at a survey 8 years it was a quite old survey some to, uh, around you know it came out in um, i think around 2013 or something so it mm -hmm. it the survey said that you know indian workers are are the happiest lot you know they were actually number 3 in terms of satisfaction just behind uh, you know netherlands and canada okay uh, i'm saying that was 2013 uh, do you see you know is can you say that you know indian workforce is still the satisfied lot or things have changed in the last 8 years you know we know that there has been a lot of change in terms of you know it could be societal changes it could be economical changes it it is you know our life itself has changed in the last 8 years you know the way we work the way we live the way we interact with people a lot has changed you know can we still say that the, the indian work force or indian workmen are still the happiest or the most satisfied lot are they easy to be satisfied you have you have personally worked in you know the markets both the economies both the societies yeah so do you think that indian workmen are uh, you know are easy to be you know pleased then then probably other company other uh, countries well again we are talking about relative happiness right yeah <laughs> whether they are happy, happier than other countries or not uh, look without comparing because every country and every context like uh, this is a very contextual thing right yeah uh, there's a nice book also is called ikigai right uh, which talks about why japanese live longer why they are happier than any other lords so yeah. within japan also there's a pocket which is happier than others they live longer than others right uh, likewise uh, when i had gone to bhutan once on personal trip so there yeah. happiness is such a word that everybody uses even on the street right so we are i think they started the first time the happiness quotient or happiness uh, report yeah they were they were the happiest country in uh, you know in asia something the happiest country yeah. of, is is one of those scandinavian countries generally which is between finland and Sweden and Denmark and uh, yeah, so gross happiness index. If I remember correctly, that was called gross happiness index. Yeah, but so, the survey that I was referring to is about the workplace. You know, there was some yeah. study done. Yeah, uh, certainly. So I think it's also about the mindset, right? If as a society, if as a country, I'm looking for what defines my happiness, which is basically linked with the kind of life that you are living or you want to live. If you are getting it fulfilled, you are happy in life. or in general if you're not getting those then you become unhappy yeah. now when you become unhappy the choice is that you remain unhappy or try to do something to be happy and that's where i think that what makes us keep going and i think this is the same thing in that cuts across in my view whether you are at the bottom rung of the society or the organization or at the top everybody is trying to chase something to make their life better or others life better so as a chairman i am always worried about the future creating a good wealth for the society for people who are working for my company the product services that i'm offering how do i make it better that keeps them going that makes them happy uh people are the bottom rank they want to live a better life their needs are not that much all that they yeah. need is good money to live a smaller life whatever they are happy with and that's why if you if you go to any uh, village or any why we need a uh, what you call time off from the city life to the village life 
yeah because and i guess ah this is interesting aspect to look into two and a half years ago all of us must have kind of shopped every day that this is my new shirt this is my new trouser this is my this for last two and a half years how much yes, of that has been used stop i mean forget about stopping how much we have used <laughs> i know yeah so which means that we keep expanding our want and needs beyond what we need actually yes right so that's how, so of all other things i'm sure covid has taught us a lesson that how do you how can be happy we be more expanding your be more minimalistic in our life yeah and that goes i mean one of the mantra that has evolved at least that i have seen in last 3 years of covid is how do you do more with less and when you do more with less everybody seems to be happy because you are enjoying you are kind of getting stressed to do more with less it can be money it can be resources it can be whatever even uh, even for example work space fancy work stations we have been trying to create a very fancy office space etc etc yeah. now there is a cut towards that because the realization that i can do without these fancy offices people are wanting to go to their hometown or work from wherever work from anywhere yeah. and whether that is going to define the new culture new way of working i think it's already happening so the happiness is coming now they measure of happiness is coming from the new way of working and what is exciting you whether working from home with All limited work. one laptop and one headphone right that's a, no that's an interesting point you know there was this period when uh, uh, you know offices were uh, getting fancier and fancier and organizations thought that you know that would make people happy because the the objective and the thought also was that people do spend a large part of their day in office so that is where yeah. they should be uh, you know more comfortable and that they, they should be get uh, you know everything that makes them happy you know the more fancier office that you have it was equated with the happiness quotient of the uh, employees now suddenly uh, due to the covid things changed you know we all realize that we don't need forget about fancy office we don't need office and we still can work and we can still be happy so yeah it's the betterment of you know individual homes was a priority than making uh, the you know the office campuses uh, you know upgrading the office campuses rather true yeah so it's also realization so end of the day it is a state of mind and your thank you it is philosophical because yeah and i think it's all about human psychology which part of i mean what are you thinking uh, about yourself uh, happiness is just one bit of it which is much larger than what we can define it as i mean happiness is not just one it is a, it is a large umbrella under which you can have lots of variables which can make you happy which can make you unhappy so what we see at the workplace is just one part of it whether it's the number of leaves that you take or whether it's uh, this uh, whether you are getting transport to your offices or whether you are getting good canteen whether you are getting served beer at workplace <laughs> so some of those things are always uh, kind of triggering a different thought process right but all that has got to change now because most of the time you are working from home so it is open bar for you if you want to have at home <laughs> right uh, you are better at managing time so i have not seen any anybody complaining about productivity issue that after we have started working from home we have reduced our product productivity because everything even in manufacturing for example yeah the i think the thing is that manufacturing unit you cannot have 100% work from home because you have a production unit right so that has yeah. to be on the shelf uh, whether they will be happy if they have a remote control to manage the operations Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps in oil and gas, oil and gas sector, it might be because I know when I was working for BG that time, we were looking at technology which can give a remote control for the rig operations, oil production, okay. sitting in the air conditioned office outside the uh, somewhere. So those are the advancements that can happen. 
but coming back to the topic of happiness at workplace or in the organization i think it's all about what you are you need three things to be happy at workplace one is a good job good work that you need to do a good manager who can help you who can support you who can guide you and the third is good support of social support or infrastructure and i'll add the fourth one that happiness in work happiness at work or in the job is defined whether you have changed the legacy whether you have changed anything which you inherited from your predecessor or from the road whether you have built the team which is self sustainable which is going to contribute to the organization even if you are not there and the third is whether you are going to leave a legacy which people will remember that this change or this happened and we all talk about and best way to do happiness uh, indexing is talking about your obituary so if you die tomorrow what people will talk about you yeah and listening to that will also makes you feel happy that whether you have done that's one part of one source of happiness but coming back to the basic thing that at workplace these three four things which will make you happy have a meaningful job have a supporting manager and try to bring about the change that you wish to change and that's self centered approach helping other people is also another dimension you can add at workplace because the informal network is much stronger than any formal network in the organization so right so basically you know, or, yeah uh, organizations have always tried to provide you know uh, materialistic happiness to its uh, employees you know and and i have seen that across uh, sectors you know so i'll just give you an example like you were talking about an oil company you know you work with those who are there at you know on shore you know there you get a lot of benefits because you are in a difficult situation you are away yeah. from the land you know so you you get a lot of perks to keep you know in a in a in a more happier or you know you know happier mood you know to to basically pep you up you know so it mm-hmm. could be you know unlimited drinks it could be unlimited it could be games it could be many many other things that uh, you do you know similarly you will see uh, you know many of the uh, organizations they will put their uh, people in best of hotels just to give those you know or or their sales force they make sure that the their sales people stays in the best of hotels you know to give that that certain materialistic pleasures you know even if it is for a day even if it is for a week many people they travel a lot so they make sure that you know they always stay in the best of hotels so that they, they you know they 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 have got a peppy mood and to make them peppier you know has those things changed have our uh, you know the way we define happiness has changed or the way organizations now approach happiness has changed and it could have happened across sectors because earlier uh, you know i would say that these things were meaningful because many people would not afford it you know it it was afforded in their personal life or what would happen is that it would give them a sense of achievement and put them at a higher pedestal than the rest of the janta i'm just saying that you know it there was a point of time when you were able to you know travel uh, by air it was a differentiator that you know you are different from the rest of the people in the society so that was a kind of achievement you know even if you are staying in a five star hotel or you know do to you know there could be many other things like that you know which was like a sense of achievement the companies that's why you know provided that to their workforce now anybody and uh, these things are very uh, you know is beyond um, sorry it, it is within the reach of the common man so now these things are not differentiators any longer so probably the perks and the different attributes of happiness or wow the organizations treat their employees or you know want to incentivize their employees has changed 
Well, I think the entire reward philosophy or benefit policy has always been to differentiate, right? Yeah. And as a society, also we have created that hierarchy of entitlement or benefit, whether they give it or not. And as far as uh, our tendency, uh, yeah, organization is one part, but we look at it this way that what gives us uh, more excitement or happiness? If you order a swiggy and you get ten percent discount or something, you feel good. Are you? I got it. <laughs> it's nice. Uh, if you get a voucher worth five hundred rupees because you spent something, or you get a point which you can incur, although it is in the large scheme of things is hardly any money, right? Yeah. But it's a gratification that you re- receive, which, which again, whether you, whether you need, uh, whether you are looking for instantaneous gratification in prompt things, or you want a sustainable gratification, which I call could be the happiness. That, how do you want to be happy in there? What all you need to sustain to be to keep the source of happiness? So materialistic thing will always give you happiness then and there. And uh, one of the example is always the benefits or compensation, which is more materialistic entitlement. So while as a society or even as a corporate, if you look at the entire approach to meet. Uh, employees or uh, so-called talent expectations is from defined benefit or defined uh, you know entitlement base to like contribution and choice based methods and the reason for that is that we have all becoming more educated we are better in control of our own finances our own life yeah. how do i want to manage the company you are entitled to receive 100 rupees. Yeah. Right. I give you 100 rupees. You want to drive a Mercedes and don't do anything on HRA or don't do anything on your LTA. That's your call. Why? That's your call. For me, the call as a company I am giving. And that's like in a way I'm creating empowerment that you you define your finances yourself. Right. So and that way, if you look at why somewhere these are the constraints that only cannot be overcome is your whole social system or your uh, so-called rule book and income tax etc are kind of making you create that hierarchy why up to this you will give only 10 percent why up to this you will get 30 percent lta was in four years as if you should not be traveling on uh, family <laughs> holidays for yeah. so how will you feel happy about the entire thing? Even if as a company, I give you LTA every year, but you are going to claim exemption, which will give you happiness that, oh, I saved yeah. this much of money. Okay. So fundamentally, money certainly motivates, money certainly makes you happy. But what is in addition to the money or in addition to the financial or is what one should look for to be happy throughout. And that is where it's important to derive something for for oneself that what will make me happy and i go back to the same example that i gave you with that i need to choose between absolute happiness and relative happiness see if i'm choosing F, relative happiness then i need to take it in a positive way and keep working towards being happy in absolute term at workplace i should look for happiness from what job i'm doing i should be doing a meaningful job my manager, which may not come all the time by my choice that he, should, he or she should be my manager, but whoever he is, I need to have a supportive manager. I need to have a good social network. And I need to create team and help others. So if I'm deriving some of these parameters for myself, defining, designing my happiness journey, then I think life is set. It doesn't, then it doesn't matter which company you're working in and what company is doing for you. Right? So as a company, certainly it is also a fact that we cannot be creating policy procedure to manage 10,000 and one lakh of people. Because end of the day, we are defining that as an organization, as a what I define as a purpose of the organization, yeah. that this is how, this is what I we offer you as an employment uh, proposition. Yeah. It is up to you to take it, up to you not to take it. Right? And so I think that's where we are. So it's evolving. Uh, so happiness quotient and the reference will keep changing. But I think the fundamental of human being will remain the same. We have, I'm sorry to say, and you can delete it from the video. We have not no, evolved no, no. as a human being. No. We are still there, what it was maybe 
the same fight the same uh, jealousy the same uh, riot the same uh, rule book the basic has not changed fundamental has remained the same the I mean, emotions it's... have remained the same only the needs and requirements and the parameters have changed you know yeah and the method of fulfilling those have changed perhaps earlier it used to be limited option but now you have multiple options multiple options it is wrong and that's i would say that it's uh, more or less organized chaos <laughs> to sell through but that's again on a negative side but uh, end of the day is life so do you, do you yeah. know one last question actually you know before we wind this up uh, do you uh, think that you know a uh, happy workforce you know translates directly to a uh, you know more productivity and business growth do you actually believe in that or do you think you know people are emphasizing on it too much you know give, giving too much emphasis on this actually does not matter you know and it it could be true yeah people come there to work i always believe that you know the uh, the employment clause is basically is is very transactional and it is an agreement between an employer and an employee which both party agrees to it is like in legal document you know i am ready to sell my house to somebody and somebody is ready to buy my house and we agree on these terms and conditions so it, it, the the um, or or i rent out my house to somebody on certain conditions and that person also rents my you know house on certain on those conditions if we both uh, you know abide by those rules and everyone would be happy and satisfied the the, the employment yeah. contract is also very similar or we we expect too much out of it well i think the employment contract comes to the picture what is my notice period <laughs> what is my incentive <laughs> what are the benefits you know and uh, non disclosure the intellectual property right at, at higher level no poaching severance package so some of those things are like you said it's a legal and uh, obviously it's no, in india we are far away from employment at will kind of uh, system which yeah. is kind of getting prevalent uh, in another part of the world but coming to the basic uh, which something i was referring to in the beginning is one of my organizers when we talked about the baby crying that what the mother should do and is part of the organizational psychology course i was there is a theory i don't remember that but there it is to be research that whether happy workers are productive worker and vice versa yeah it's very difficult to say because all all people who are happy may be productive answer is no and the reason being but whether productive workers are happy worker that also is very difficult to say very difficult to say yeah but end of the day i would rather say that again go back to the basic that what defines happiness for me if sometime money comes secondary if i am doing my job with meaningful job i am excited about coming to work every day i feel that i am making a difference if i love working with my boss he or she is my mentor guide etc i like to be surrounded by people peer group that i have in the organization i like whatever support system etc wellness physical emotional and uh, mental or social all kind of social those kind of things if they are getting met then i think there is no other reference to be made for the happiness i mean within it's a matter of self uh, definition whether i am productive or i am not productive but if i am doing all the right thing meaningful good manager etc there is i don't see any reason why somebody should not be productive that's for the management or the staff level at worker level if i if you go and ask the person about any product the person is making on the shop floor look at uh, look into their eyes and the glitters that they show when they see that the product that they are making is looking so much and is good getting so much of money for the company it's like my baby is grown up now yeah. it is getting so right sense so, of achievement is there yeah yeah that is and they don't expect anything in return but the process of making that product on the shop floor goes through that grind and the sacrifices shift working late night etc etc and that is where they feel the organization should 
help them address their concerns, provide them good infrastructure, good canteen, good welfare, family support, etc. All those things. Yeah. And and we went on that front. I think the point that you raised, if you look at our system, has also evolved. So, for example, earlier it was all paternalistic culture or paternalistic approach to manage employees' expectations, right? Whether it's public sector companies or whether it's the government offices and all, everything was entitlement based. That once you are here, this is what you get. Sometimes we ourselves have evolved aspiration or being more happy. And now the theory is very much there for any reward, any happiness. It is like all are equal, but some are more equal than others. That's a fundamental differentiating principle. Yeah. Right? Uh, so we have come that all are equal. From there, we have come to a place where we are saying that, well, all are equal, but some are more equal than others. And that's why they are. And those who are not in that group, they feel unhappy. Oh, I should be like that. <laughs> so again, the relative term. So that's how I think uh, people are, again, happiness, whether materialistic happiness, uh, trigger for you to be happy or a spiritual trigger for happy or doing nothing is also makes you happy. <laughs> so it's, and imagine how many people are quitting their job and just wanting to be a freelancer or just work as I go or go for a long hike or trek, etc. So end of the day, what is happening is very individualistic these days and people have lots of options to be happy. It's just a matter of picking up those what gives me most uh, makes me most happy. Yeah, the newer generation is totally different, you know. They have got yeah. a very, very different mindset. Their need, uh, you know, um, they don't need to fight for the basics, you know. The basics has always been met. Yeah. Like the, the generation before, they had to fight for their basics. Yeah, the basics were all always met, you know. Or, or, or I would say more than basics was always met. So yeah. now they want to achieve, they have got a different, uh, the, the sense of achievement or level of achievement has changed totally, you know. Yeah. So that's life. That's life, yes. Like Johnny Walker said, keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. So Rajiv, that was, that was interesting. That was, that was a really interesting conversation that we had with Rajiv today and I as I always say you know every time I speak to someone on happiness I get to learn new things today I learned about you know uh, basically relative happiness or relative unhappiness you know and how it prevails in the workplace thank you Rajiv thank you Rajiv for taking out time and sharing your thoughts with us thanks Prajal always a pleasure talking to you and hope, hope this is a happiness, a happy ending to this. Yeah. <laughs>